All junglers know what it's like to have a really strong early game and then throw. All junglers also know what it's like to have a really bad early game and make a comeback. The eternal tug of war between two junglers and trying to get control over the map and stop their erroneous feeding is one we all know. It's the one that the challenger junglers do every single game and seemingly always win. And so I'm going to give you four overlooked jungle fundamentals for quick climbing success as we head to the end of season 13 and the start of season 14. And as obviously you are watching the first clears, yes, these things will be applied to season 14 as well. They will be the things that no matter what Riot does to the map will hold true true for your jungling for all eternity. And now you will know, hey, the Briar is doing Red Crux Raptors and cutting down to gank on the bottom side. This is a fundamental we talk about all the time, trying to make a play ahead of what the enemy jungler wants to accomplish. The thing is, you have to understand lane states and where the enemy jungler is going to be. If they're going to vertical jungle you, or if they're going to be in an area where they can cut you off and maybe collapse on you. And part of this fundamental is, as you see, the Nocturne going, I'm not going to finish my blue and grump or my grump and blue. I see the Briar going for the gank. The bottom lane respected it, which doesn't always happen. I give you that and then dies. Now, I know you've been in the position of the Nocturne, and I know you've been in the position of the Briar, but quickly have a look at the screenshot later in the game. Look at their KP, look at their CS, look how they're doing overall. We're looking at the tug of war of jungle control and balance. If you want help implementing this information into your own game, I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coach and VOD libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q and A's and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's converting junglers to gold, to emerald, to diamond, to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. Jumping back into the present moment, we have adapted our early clears, we've already had a proactive gank and nice reactive collabs, and the Nocturne decides, hey, I'm gonna fall back and do my cams, and then because I know the Briar has to go to the top side, I can set myself up to counter jungle the respawn of her Krugs and Raptors. He's tracking those timers. Fundamental to all junglers, you must understand the respawn timers. That will not change in Season 14. But as you can see, you can also react and go to the bottom side and say, look, if the blue side bottom lane wants to set themselves up for a free kill, I'll do that. I'll chase a little bit too heavily on the ADC and die, but that always is one of those restraint things. Don't over push it, which is why I chose a master tier Korean game represents basically most of you in terms of these are the things you're doing right, these are the things you're doing wrong, and these are the things you gotta fix to climb quickly. That's the focus. So obviously now out of base you might think, all right, the Briar's definitely top side. She's taking that top side scuttle, the top side camps. She goes ahead and says, you know what? Let me just kill this Malzahar and the turret because my champion's easy to pilot. I have the kill and I have the time now that the Nocturne overcommitted on my ADC. That's great, but then you might think, oh, she's gonna go ahead and do the Nocturne's camps, right? She doesn't have the exact timers, she knows they're gonna be spawning around this time, but she also knows the Nocturne, because he died, will have to come to the top side again to take these camps and might look to prevent her from taking them. Nocturne knows this and says, why don't I just let you believe I'm going top side and instead, I'm gonna go to the bottom side. The classic jungle mislead fundamental. Use your tracking, use what you expect them to expect you to do, and then reverse it. So we do some handshaking, Briar ganks the top lane, Nocturne ganks the bottom lane. Nocturne still knows where she is, knows she has to reset at this point, and then we'll head to her Raptors and Crux. We steal her Raptors, so Kali shattering, Bard shows up, we yeet on out for a magical journey of destiny, and we go ahead and, you know, we're destined to take the Grub. At this stage, the pings are on the minimap, you can see it. The Nocturne wants to say, enough fisting, I need to sequence, I need to go ahead and control my entire camps, because I don't want to be counter jungled. I don't want the snowballing jungler to get a lead through any sort of mistake I might make or any sort of randomness she might do. I need to do a full sequence up. She's going to gank the bottom side because she's got no camps on the top side, really. She's going to have no crocs taken as she's going to take those. We saw her on the ward. Please respect the Briar ganking the bottom lane. Bard doesn't do that and Bard dies. The Nocturne then doesn't overcorrect. He doesn't say, well, guys, I pinged it and then flame them. He understands our second jungle fundamental, which is denial, tempo, and accepting that the enemy jungler is able to make plays. Once you accept this and you say, what can I now do to punish where she is? That's when you start to become a better jungler. Basically, what I'm trying to say is as a jungler, understand the following. When the game gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make the game, take the lemons back. Get mad. I don't want your damn lemons. That means when the Elaners are inting and giving free shit to the enemy jungler, you're deciding, hey, I'm level 6, I'm ulting top lane because you were bottom lane. I know you're doing dragon and dinged off. Now I have multiple options. I could take your whole blue side and then spit on you as you show up, or I can ward it, track you, and go ahead and do the Herald because you were stupid enough to walk down after you ganked mid lane. Remember that? It showed up on the map. These are the things that help you become a better jungler. Fine, I pinged it, she got free food. Doesn't matter, it's dog food. I'm gonna take the Savant Caviar food off of the map. This is as much a mentality as an understanding. The denial, the counter jungling, the punishing of mistakes, the accepting of what's going on, and trying to make the best of a situation. 
This is truly what separates those of the best junglers and those who are simply destined to only cut down Christmas trees versus the greatest trees of all time. Although please, you know, save the trees, don't cut down the trees, we want trees. Now unfortunately, when you try to throw the lemons back at the game, Briar tends to get upset and so does the enemy jungler. The Briar understands, okay look, you took the Herald, you gave me my blue stuff, let me gank topside, I know you're gonna go back to base, I know and everyone knows you're gonna go to the bottom side now again and, and try to accomplish something before I'm able to reset. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which jungler you're supporting here, the Briar has a Kali Pryo. Kali decides to go and cut off the Nocturne from his camps. This is the continuing fundamental of understanding acceptance, alright, can't do anything. But he shadows the scenario, he's able to ult back in off cooldown and kill the lugs. Unfortunately, Briar does show up, Akali is there and Briar gets some kills. More bad things happen for the red team and all of a sudden, Briar's in a little bit of a control situation with 5-2-1 and the Nocturne's only 3-2-1. But as we are here to understand how to climb quickly and navigate these sorts of scenarios, as a Briar grabbed that fifth kill, you would have seen the Nocturne drop the Herald to the mid lane just to push up prior just to get plates. Now you need to understand the third fundamental here, which is create some distance. That's exactly what he did. Knowing that Briar was topside and that he had two camps on the top side as well, he decided, look, let me just activate this Herald to get cash money gold before the plates die, give Malzah something, give myself something. We have lots of time here, I'm relaxed. Let me take the bottom scuttle, a neutral, juicy crustacean objective, and then obviously bottom lane is pushing themselves out also. Now as you see, the downside is the Briar just moves from top lane to mid lane, a great play by her. Okay, Nocturne, you wanna shove it up? Free kill for me. Nocturne goes, well, you know, I didn't really expect that, but okay. He falls back to his camp to control his jungle. Remember, these negative game situations now, control your jungle first and foremost. The Malzahar TP's back to mid lane to try and finish off that turret early. The Trundle also moves on down to do this. This elevates the game state. This creates a bit of cryo for us because that dragon is spawning, which we now want to snack. The Hextech dragon, very good for us. And part of this third fundamental as we pause here because impending doom is about to occur, it also means understanding to force a moment where the best player will win. Force a moment where a lead can be used, and if you're the most fed member, do something to make the game swing in your favor. Usually that means fighting over an objective, forcing a rotation on a split push without dying. These sorts of things can make huge differences. So, we play the clip and all of a sudden Bri goes ahead and steals the dragon. We force her to get desperate to show up to do this. This means she dies. It also means that now we have numbers advantage so we can chain kill anyone else who steps out of position. And don't get me wrong, usually we should always be able to hit those smites, but we only had 900 smites here, Lux was ulting, and Bri just synced it up absolutely beautifully. A little bit of luck, a little bit of just good skill there, but she dies for it. Is it worth dying for this dragon if you're the Briar? I don't always think it is, because now you give a shutdown, you're dead on the map for 20 to 30 seconds, the Nocturne gets multiple kills, and that's exactly what he was trying to force to happen. If you want to climb quickly, this is what you have to do. If you're the Briar, you can't try and make hero plays when you don't need to. If you're the Nocturne, you're trying to force them into these bad plays while making sure it's strategically sound for you even if you lose the objective. And using the first fundamental here, we sequence all the way up to control our camps and we see someone low, it's the Rango, we reactively path, cut off and get that kill as well. All of a sudden, we're 62, 83 CS to the Briar and 623, 88 CS to the Nocturne, we have a small little advantage. The map is still pushed in a little bit, but we are Nocturne, we bring the Shadow of Mordor, and Briar only probably brings rabies. And because it's Nocturne, we understand that Briar is gonna wanna force this objective again, even though she doesn't really have the map presence. We do. You have the Shadow Blanket as well. Now, whatever your alt is, it doesn't really matter. The idea is though, that in these objective fights that we picked in the mid game, you are using the lead you have that your team does not to make plays that aren't against your team, but with your team and just using them as not really practice dummies, but not really sack of potatoes either. I guess they're just little bits of worm for the fish and for the sharks. But the thing is you're Megalodon and you're gonna consume everything. Again, a mentality, understanding that the whole point of the early game is to get to these moments as a jungler. If you're always behind in 15 minutes, fix your jungling by focusing on the first three fundamentals we've talked about. They will allow you to get fed every game. And then thereafter, it's about ensuring you don't throw, but also we're still behind on gold. We have to swing this gold lead further. The Malza has only just gotten into the game. At this stage, you've noticed you've left windows open when you've left the house. You know, you've gone to the market, you've left windows open. A raccoon enters and decides to cook all of your best steak. A baboon wanders in and plays with all your toilet paper and unravels it all over your house while unpacking all of your closets. That actually happened to us on a field trip because I'm from South Africa and we had actual baboons enter the house and do exactly that. So that memory is a literal statement. But applying that to jungle principles is don't let the briar dictate the tempo anymore. You're in the mid game, you have the lead, make the play. Someone will overcommit, someone will overpush beyond fog of war. Kill them, don't farm. 
make actionable plays, force them to follow you around trying to defend turrets. They cannot do it because your team are following you, the leader of the game. You gotta put yourself in that position and if you don't, focus on the rest of the video in the Ola game because once you reach this moment at 17 minutes when you're forcing everyone to rotate with their bad and shit itemization, with you having great itemization, again a huge thing of why I chose this game is most of you playing ELOs when no one builds right. That's a factual statement too. And as long as you're building right, you're gonna have the ability to win because at the end of the day, it is a statistical game when it comes to PVP. Certain champions are just stat checkers. You wanna have the best stats. Now, all of a sudden, you've pushed up the top wave, killed them all again. The mid lane turret's dead. The bottom lane turret's still up. The dragon's gonna be spawning. We wanna make sure we snack that. And this is all part of that fourth fundamental where we're talking about elevating the game state beyond that which the enemy team can see. In other words, they're short, you're tall, they can't see over the fence to see what wonders lie beyond. However, as you all know and can see, the issue does arise where you have an enemy top laner splitting when there's an objective on the map. The enemy jungler feels free to, you know, collapse on him and kill him. You're wondering what the hell's going on. She tries to steal it. This time she's way too late and fails and dies. The problem is their whole team is able to actually do stuff and you all die as well. The idea here is not to necessarily throw you the game where you've just recovered the lead, but just to understand, look, I need the objective and if things don't work out for us, I can fall back and farm my camps. But don't also ditch your team when you could win a fight. At the end of the day, the reality is you might win the fight, you might lose the fight. It's about outplays, mechanical potential, understanding how to go in and out. And that is a different discussion when we're talking about these kinds of decisions, so I'll leave a link below for that. But if you have a mastery of team fighting, more often than not, you will win these moments. And if you have a top laner who's running down and inting, sometimes you will lose these moments. But fortunately, Briar died. Also fortunately, you're knocked and so you're going to respawn by the time they might try and sneak a Baron. Don't flow to the side where there's no objective. Don't flow to Gromp, don't flow to bottom lane. You know the thing on the map right now is the Baron, and that's going to determine a lot in Season 14. Baron is going to have different maps. Different things about him, different ways to fight him. You have to understand this fourth endgame fundamental when it comes to winning, because if you don't have the patience necessary, you don't push the map forward at all times, you don't try and make them trail you with your macro, you're just not going to win games. You're going to throw games, you're stalling, giving them time to catch their breath. And while it's not typical to necessarily break down all these endgame fantasies because they differ so much from game to game, that's why I have that video that I linked in the description, just respawning and understanding, hey, the Baron's on the map, that's what we need to get, they're going to try and greed for it, I'm looking at the Briar's itemization and saying, look, this is shit itemization. Don't build this when you're behind, because now I'm just going to be able to kill you. And because I have the good itemization going GA third as well, you can't do anything. And basically, if you do kill me, you won't kill me twice. Guardian Angel is a great third item for finishing games like this. Dynamic itemization when it comes to trying to win games quickly is absolutely imperative. Now, obviously, this game won't necessarily go on for the longest time. We'll have a few team fights, we'll have a few pigs. The Nocturne continues to keep high pressure, and whenever they overcommit, we punish them, and whenever they do nothing, we push them in and force them to overcommit, and again, punish them once more. That's the thing about these kinds of videos. You have to try and cover a multitude of scenarios in each one, so you will understand that, hey, look, the Briar tried to make a highly coin flip play, the Nocturne was positioned to counter it. The Nocturne then tried to map control the Briar, who then forced things and got a lead of her own. She then threw that because the Nocturne understand he just had to create some distance between them in order to give his team a bit of room to breathe, before he shut her down in a great dragon fight. You have a gold swing where the Briar is way further ahead than the Nocturne is as a team, and he's still able to carry it through some basic fundamentals. All junglers need to understand everything in this video, no matter what jungler you play, your kit will enable you to do this to some degree. And if you don't really think it does, and you want a different understanding, click the video in the box on the top right to also learn how to 1v9, and climb as fast as you can before the end of Season 13. Or climb as fast as you can at the beginning of Season 14.